Welcome back friends. Uh, today we're talking gear bags again, and particularly the brand new uh, Teufelberger Lazy Mule. And uh, we'll kind of just briefly compare it to these other two bags that uh, I, one I previously used and uh, one I still am using. Uh, this will just be uh, initial impressions, not really like a full on review. But we'll go over its components and kind of what the gear that I have in it, just to give someone a uh, an idea, I guess, of how one way uh, you can use it, or at least how I use it. Let's do a, a quick size comparison. This uh, I've done like two videos on this bag, uh, the Eagle Creek 36 inch ORV trunk. Uh, and this is uh we won't really talk much about this because again there's two videos about it if you want to see about this bag uh i think i've used it for about a good year and some change but uh you can see it's uh bigger and it does uh it does have definitely more storage and more pockets this is wheeled as well both of these bags are wheeled so you can see that if you haven't seen the uh seen or heard about the Teufelberger Lazy Mule and this is your first time then uh, I'll leave uh, I'll leave the uh, couple videos uh, about it in the description too and there is also uh, I'll leave in the description there is a uh, just for ease for ease sake so you guys don't have to go searching uh, the uh, assembly instructions I guess where they have a nice video on how to put the uh, accessories on it but basically uh, you've seen the size uh, difference uh, these two bags there really was nothing too wrong with this other than there like I said it wasn't designed for arborist use so uh, there was no back backpack straps so I added backpack straps that came actually off from the Teufelberger uh, bucket bag and this is actually the shoulder strap that came off of this bag uh, this is a 50 liter I think uh, the Eagle Creek might be something like over 100 liters, and I believe this was like 80 of storage, uh, just for comparison. I believe some of the components from this bag, like you could take this uh, front uh, gear meal, which we'll talk about in a second, you could put that on here. I believe even the shoulder strap uh, could have been somehow uh, popped on to this bag, but this really caught my eye because of uh, the way it opens and uh, the gear kind of comes in and out of it and it, uh, I, I looked up the, like the dimensions and it was smaller than this bag and I thought uh, that I could still despite the smaller size I would actually uh, prefer it for uh, because of the need of getting getting it in and out of the back of uh, my car that little extra compact space uh, it made a made a world of difference in the back of my uh, Subaru Outback the ease of access that I mentioned, it has a roll top. I really like that idea. This is very kind of minimalist, uh, this bag. So again, people with like a simpler kit uh, would really uh, shine for them. Uh, it's a bit pricey for all the, cause uh, I, I got it decked out with all of the, the stuff that it comes with. Like again, we'll talk about that. Uh, uh, basically gear meal, uh, storage pouch and then you have uh, an internal rope bag that's uh, specifically designed for it and you have uh, waist straps and shoulder straps or backpack straps however you want to say and then this is an over-the-shoulder one I added for uh, basically an attempt to make that easier to grab uh, grab in and out and potentially as a tow handle Right anyway, one thing I can say as far as a con goes for this bag, maybe something should have been thought of a little better for a handle for the actual purposes of uh, toting it. Um, like through an airport or whatever, just uh, down a driveway, to and fro your vehicles to the back to the, the job site. You kind of, you don't really want to hold on to just the top uh, snaps, but there is a hardened piece that I believe makes it easier to roll up much easier that so you sort of want to grab the whole the whole shebang when you do like that's about the best best option uh, easiest so I've uh, just sort of threw this on there to sort of grab it like that and make maybe make toting it a little easier for me and that's 
that works decent. And I also that has these two uh, two grab handles, top top and bottom. But uh, just to make it easier, I just threw on uh, with a like Prusik, uh English Prusik. So I mean, used two iron eyes that I don't no longer uh, will climb with. I just threw them on there just for a quick like. I can. I don't even really have to look, you know, to, to grab it and to, to load it, load it up into a bag or into a truck vehicle, what have you. All right, we'll just start on the outside. Uh, I recently started storing the uh, spurs behind the gear mule, and I like the fact that uh, it has these. Uh, the gear mule comes with these uh, all uh, six straps. Technically. Uh, it's technically it's eight straps if you count the if you count the e, these as two, but I count them as I guess it's kind of one unit, so they go across and then you have uh, uh, four four corners that hold the gear mule. But that comes right uh, all the way off, and this will actually this will actually too uh, for long treks. I will probably never use it that way, but I guess if people really have to hike afar distance this does actually strap on the front you know that's an option it's pretty this bag is pretty versatile i just got it uh because uh it made things simpler and like you'll see a plethora of daisy chains all over but who really uses that many daisy chains so they give you more than you need they're all around it you maybe even could put spurs in these uh there's a bottom set of straps that uh, I noticed that the vi videos didn't talk about well one of them did the tree stuff uh, Nick Bonner video uh, mentioned these little things you could probably roll up like a rain jacket and put it here and maybe possibly find a way to tuck a throw cube I keep mine in the main compartment we'll go over the main compartment in a second here but uh, possibly you could uh, do like this number here is one one possible way to utilize this front and maybe I'll keep a backup throw cube I do have a, another throw cube and it's not a bad idea to actually it should be relatively out of the way I got a shitty beat up old weaver uh, not that this one's uh, any any better than a weaver cube but I think it's a forester cube that came from uh, Bartlett. Anyhow, or potentially, potentially a spur, a set of spurs could go that way too, if a person felt so inclined. It does seem like that would. Uh, it does seem like it would work. I'm not sure. I would feel. The greatest doing it that way, but that is an option. What's nice about this bag? Uh, super uh, customizable to the individual's liking. Anyways, as I was mentioning, about to mention, uh, I have the shoulder waist strap actually installed uh, backwards. This is actually supposed to be flipped so that when uh, you you take your that when you take your uh, waist straps around, um, the pockets are actually supposed to be on the outside, and there's actually like the soft foam. But uh, these shoulder straps run back order, so I've actually been using this bag the whole time without shoulder straps, and so I just thought let's install it backwards so that way I have like two extra outside pockets. And uh, I believe I'll continue to run it that way. Like I said, that that waist strap going around the front actually may may help one day as uh, some form of extra sort of gear tie down, like for the spurs or whatever. Um, bet you you can even probably, in combination with all the straps, when this is on and loaded, uh, put a set of uh, big shot poles down the side. Uh, basically, uh, this this is actually uh, really caught my eye here too. Oh, my uh, outside pockets. Uh, I just have uh, kind of like sort of not important, but like you know it makes sense. You could put a little first aid kit maybe on the side. Uh, I just have like accessory cordage for miscellaneous use, and then like a um, 
barely ever used uh, uh, I and I maybe just in case if the need for that comes up. Oh, and here you know, like you'll notice uh, actually there's already a little rip in that, so like we haven't been rocking this too long, so it's a little tender. In some areas. Let me show a close up of uh, this area down here too, from like sliding it across when I would throw it up on top of the bucket bucket truck storage um, bins. I'd kind of strap it on top of them because we had limited room. Uh, that's already tearing up. The rest of the bag seems uh, quite rugged, but that's a soft back foam that's like non-removable because it helps hold the uh, waist straps in. So, eh, maybe something could have been, they were trying to go for comfort, but maybe something a little more rugged could have been done there. Not everyone's going to be taking and throwing this on on its back and sliding it little cross stuff like I was. And over here is just an additional uh, saw, chainsaw lanyard I have. And on the front there's like a, an additional couple loops. I, I like the way I got this uh, this handsaw uh, for my leg. It's got the notch tail and uh, leg mount so that's uh, like a kind of uh, it stays secure behind all the straps. But it's uh, you know ready to de deploy in that way. This is usually my go-to method. And then uh, this really caught my eye though when I first saw the videos uh, about this bag. This uh, this proprietary uh, handsaw storage on the side. So this is like the backup if uh, if I'm gonna go up and just want a, a just in case. Um, handsaw because you really should always kind of have one with you so this one I'll, I'll throw on the uh, on the saddle on the side is really when I use this one so it's just nice to have that kind of kept separate from everything which I guess there's some other I'm sure there's other things you could do maybe even use that as your big shot poles it looks like two big shot poles would easily fit down there it kind of bottoms out into a little pocket so there's like a there is a bottom there to that but that's nice uses the same kind of drawstring method as the uh, Teufelberger bucket bag roll top we mentioned all right there's uh we'll just tell you straight up this is there's no inside pockets at all there's only four loops that look just like this this loop right here with the green on it four of them inside so you could use that as uh whatever like clips to clip a rope climbing something or a climbing device but that's it's a drawback for some because of the lack of pockets on this bag um, which actually look uh, you got your main pocket there's this tiny little kind of hidden one uh, big enough you probably could put phone like a phone or a wallet keys stuff like that it's really not not the greatest and daisy chains and you have that uh, just the, the handsaw pocket that I mentioned. So technically that's only uh, two two pockets really in a main compartment. But that's not a drawback for someone that's got simple stuff. So right away we have uh, we have our throw cube that comes out of the top because that's usually the first thing you want is your throw line. And then second I got my climb line, 150 feet. Uh, I've also done a video on this uh, monkey beaver rope bag. Uh, it's pretty sweet. So. You can go check that out if you haven't seen it already and then of course so yeah there's your order of operations kind of nice and easy set your your throw line uh climb line main climb line i should say because uh and then your saddle generally that's coming on next is the monkey beaver saddle also done a done a little video on that too so we'll talk about that that's awesome so all we'll say is it's an awesome saddle. Okay, let's tip this tip this down. Now you get a better better look. See, hopefully, I know the lighting's kind of limited. It is. I see right there. It is 80 liter. It says so. There is a stiff supports in the side of this because uh, so you technically if you if a person wanted to to make this a little more pliable and soft, here is uh, these are removable four of them. But I. I have no desire to uh, to run it without them, so it's extra support. But there is, I did forget about that feature. 
hopefully you can see this here. It's like a waterproof uh, zipper. I believe this bag isn't like all super, super waterproof, but highly uh, water resistant. But here you have this nice handy, if maybe uh, your setup's a little different. You just want to throw something back in the, your bag. This zips down and uh, gives you access without having to unroll the top. Kind of a sweet feature. And also, zipper seems rugged enough, and then especially if you don't use it ever, it's never going to be an issue. I don't see foresee that this is one of the other accessories that you can choose to get or choose not to to, to kind of save costs but it's a cool little uh i want to say 30 liter pretty sure 30 liter rope bag that has just a few daisy chains simple i don't think there's no pockets and so here i have a little mrs uh friction saver another a sweet beautiful uh it comes in handy, uh, the U-Saver, which our obsession, uh, this was the tree stuff version, our obsession actually has a uh, uh, U-Saver also, so. So there's that, in case I, uh, depending on how I want it, because this is uh, longer, so it's like 12 foot, and this is only whatever that is. Um, is that four? Bingo, four foot. And then we have, uh, you'll see here, lots of, like that, that uh, depression. There's lots of room. I could probably put actually both ropes together. But they're both the same uh, blue moon, 150 feet, 100 feet, or 100 and some change. So a shorter one, kind of a beat em up rope. Um, whatever, pine tree or just like a SRT. Because this one has an eye, eye on the end and this rope doesn't. So kind of like maybe a canopy whatever canopy tie or a short mrs i don't want to have all the extra rope then we got the shorter rope so and inside boom uh, uh a shorter a 15 foot tri-tech lanyard ready to go and then on the bottom uh yale maxi flip 15 foot wire core half inch wire core because I don't utilize uh, I really don't like uh, steel core lanyards I don't usually utilize it a whole lot except for like on larger spars or uh, pine trees so uh, that's why that's kind of all the way at the bottom because it's not a, a heavily used one and then I have a backup uh, foot ascender down there just in case something were to happen to my main one which is an ISC, uh, ISC Strider. But, you see this, um, I mean, depending uh, on which rope I want to use, yeah, I'll have to, like, kind of move some stuff out, but, uh, we're, we're already, like, we're not going to be setting the climb line if we're not going to be climbing, so my saddle had to come out anyways. So, they designed this, too, the same shape as the bag, if you can notice that. But that look that just drops right in there easy peasy and your uh this actually uh believe it or not despite the way that i'll show you here real quick despite the way that uh rolling duffel bag opens up and unzips completely uh this i be believe to be uh actually easier in and out and the main the main reason is uh the stowing the stowing back in the bag putting the stuff away it always seems to take a little longer than uh, getting it out you know but this way uh, we kind of uh, see like I said I can actually put that out on the front that throw cube to maybe save a little bit of space but it's like how, uh, how everything stacks in there things really awesome like that and then see I'm kind of using it to the max uh, and I actually um, like I think I've started to mention before um, uh, I just recently started putting the spurs on the outside of the bag I actually used to stick them in there upside down uh, and then I could put the monkey beaver rope bag sort of sandwich them in sandwich it in between them and then the saddle would go on top but that made it that took up a little more time a little bit more to finesse with, and I was just like, you know what? Maybe I should keep them, 
keep them on the outside. Uh, and that actually, I'm liking that. So, but that's quick. Bing, bang, boom. Like I said, this is really going to always stay on the bag too, but we just took it off for demonstration purposes. This thing is really sweet, which is why I like that. And don't mind that there's no pockets in here because um, I've tried to, I used to carry, I guess, a lot more stuff. And really, there's probably, you could probably do to get rid of a couple things yet, really. Because I mostly use the Unisender to climb with nowadays, but... Um, this thing's really awesome for the way that it, uh, all your bells and whistles, your climbing devices and stuff can kind of be kept out here for easy access. And this is just kind of what I got going on here. Uh, you know, and a couple of pirate carabiners that I don't really use and a Pinto, uh, just a Hitch Climber Rapide and a Petzl Swivel Large. I think this was the ring that originally came on the uh, monkey beaver uh, bridge an extra retrieval ball there's one that I always keep on the saddle and then just a couple of this and that and daisy chain more, uh, you know more daisy chains and here's another pocket that goes all the way to the bottom and there's just some odds and ends I have in there nothing special and really like some of this stuff could be like I said uh, done away with uh, an extra pencil care tool. This actually is supposed to go in my harness uh, for rope tossing. And uh, just some mesh, zippered mesh pockets, and that's got my rope walking access. And uh, just recently picked this up, the Saka, or uh, you know the footy from Climbing Innovations. Uh, have not used that yet as, as of the making of this uh, video just a quick short little initial test but uh, that's kind of a cool maybe we'll do a video of this this guy and uh, the Saka Mini which I really love and highly recommend it'll be a separate video in the near near future how about that but there's bing, bingo bango you know those quick uh, rope walking let's go close the bag back up couple of uh, like accessory got an extra foot loop for my for future uh, the, or for when when the day comes where the foot loop on my sock of mini wears out there's a backup one ready to go and just uh, some accessory bungee because I think I had a plan for that at one point extra buff and some trinkets like I said this isn't like we're not trying to just like oh look at all the all the stuff uh, I have you know kind of thing it's like just sort of give you the ideas of how you know how you can utilize it and everyone's different so uh, this is the sweetest part i think about this gear meal is the whole like sort of hidden uh pocket but anything you got like preciouses or whatever you you want to sort of keep uh to where they're not going to fall out or just this is an extra nice uh plethora you know there's three it has this nice little draw string uh, draw snap and three horizontally fed kind of uh, mesh pockets. Got an ART positioner, some accessory cordage, and then some. Uh, what do we got? Like three, four. Yeah, these two. There's two brand crispy new unused, I believe, unused uh, INIs ready to go, and then some used INIs. And then we have uh, OG rope runner. And a zigzag plus, which I really that thing is almost brand new. I don't really use the zigzag anymore. And a Shembiner, Shembiner XL, kind of ready. Maybe if someone needs it, someone else besides me can kind of thing. Here you can use it. And it's, oh yeah, there is one more. Is that what I'm seeing? Yeah, one more zippered pocket. Two? Nope, two more. Two more zippered pockets in there. Sorry, sorry, folks. It's a bit sloppy because it's not attached to the bag so generally you're going to be you know having it attached at all of its uh all four corners when you're accessing it and uh standing up kind of thing got another Another feature was that like you can uh, from the inside take like a little accessory 
accessory beaner and uh, hook it up to one of your daisy chains because uh, this I think uh, yeah this is adjustable like up up and down the bag I have it sort of set a little lower but you can have it all the way up here have the gear meal riding a little higher and then uh, open this both both compartments up sort of to have have it like splayed out almost as if you were like a at a a damn uh, sales table or something like that like open for business use carabiners for sale <clears throat> ah it's just an extra um like a throw line uh line mug that i use to keep my uh, phone sometimes or whatever drinks yada yada throw it on my uh, harness so far so far really loving it and highly recommending um i can't like speak to the uh longevity of it you know but uh i don't other than these couple of little tender parts the rest of the bag doesn't strike me as that's really ever going to wear out um quite rugged material we will find out you know and these are adjustable as well these shoulder straps a little bit i hope that uh i guess i got everything across i usually always kind of shoot these in like one one go so they're not super you know they're not rehearsed or nothing but um so i do jump all over the place but uh in the beginning we mentioned about the size comparison and like how i actually have wanted the smaller uh profile because i knew that the gear that i used would still fit just by the based on uh, the size and stuff like that the dimensions like this one though i mean they, they sadly they no longer make the the eagle creek orv trunk they make something similar though and i guess they're actually kind of similar in price really this was a hair more expensive so i guess one more reason to actually uh lean towards an actual arborist bag versus a travel bag because uh this was a little just shy of 400 uh total uh out the door taxes and everything i believe with all of its accessories so, so it goes down i think it's like two something just for the bag itself uh this had like little little wear points this is actually surprisingly rugged uh you kind of similar as far as hard to find uh faster quicker access with them outside pockets and the main compartment folding so you could get to your uh You get to your uh, monkey beaver equipment really fast but when it was time you're done you're climbing um, and for whatever reason putting the putting all the gear back was the downside to it uh, it was really a uh, pain in the ass to, to zip it back up with the because the gears bloating it out so you'd really have to struggle and one time I had just had like a, a Super Bowl halftime uh, Janet Jackson wardrobe malfunction with the zipper where that like kind of separated. But other than that, it's just pretty rugged. It always stayed together. So really no com no major, major complaints. It just needed the, this was just like gotta, gotta have it. And then this one here does not, it's like I said before, it's the 50 liter. So this doesn't fit everything I need, but you really can't. I don't think you can be I don't know if there's a bag out there that besides uh or I doubt that there's a bag out there that is faster access than these um Teufelberger bucket bags and it could be deemed as a pro or a con I'm sort of someone who likes stuff that's just plug and play um not too much customization a little but not too much with this one you can just like the tree motion saddle it's made I think out of the similar uh, the same exact material as the tree motion saddle has the conveyor material backing so you can set it up any way you want uh, with the accessory cordage and I just have this is uh, this is used like I said uh, briefly it was used for my climbing gear but it didn't fit like I had a 15 inch handsaw that would stick out the top it wouldn't even fit in there so it doesn't fit all my stuff but someone that really has a simple simple kit um like someone that just sort of like you know spurs and 
climbs like with a taut line, so just spurs one rope and a saddle and like one one lanyard might probably could do something like this and it'd last them forever because these things are like indestructible and just this quick uh, open open up. I have like rigging hardware in here, uh, like rigging rings and slings and uh, like stuff for mechanical advantage and uh, loop runners, you know, for us uh, like a couple of uh, speed line slings is all that is. And it's heavy. But that thing, uh, I took the straps, I, you know, picked it apart. I'll probably put the backpack straps back on that, but it's really heavy. Uh, well, comparable to this, actually. They're both about the same weight. But um, it, that's not something you really are, like, carrying the entire thing. Usually it's like a a la carte thing. Like, what, am I think, what do I think I'm going to need? Like a, uh, you know, the, the porty and maybe, like, a couple of rings, a single ring and a double double ring or something like that in here that's uh that's relatively quick I mean it's, it's not like super super lightning but that's uh, relatively quick and easy and a nice clean way to to store the spurs uh, nice and secure too I really like these uh, front front straps that go over the gear mule too it just like kind of it's just a nice extra piece of mind I mean granted the four the four just the corner ones that are are plenty but this really draws allows you to I kind of have them almost like maxed out here too with this setup but allows you to just keep everything nice like these things um see there's a little slack a little slack there draw that stuff up nice Nice and tight. That's um, that's basically it here. Hopefully, I covered everything, and I appreciate um, appreciate everyone's time. And thanks for watching. And uh, hopefully, that gives you a good idea about uh, about this bag. And maybe you like it. Uh, maybe maybe it's not for you. But I believe uh, believe it's the last bag I'll need to uh, buy for for my main climbing setup. Thanks for watching.